It's quite often like a game of snooker, Dave. Got to think of your next two or three shots, really. I was just expecting, you know, to be a quality product from Siemens because, you know, the Siemens kit was generally quite reliable. People are swapping out MicroMasters now. And sometimes they go and sometimes they don't. It'd have to be the clash, Dave. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest virtual MicroMaster Museum podcast. My name's Dave Holcroft. I work in customer services. I'm responsible for uh, sales in several of our regions. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Steve Lawler, from our service business in the UK. Hello, Steve. How are you? Hi, Dave. Yeah, good, thanks. Great, great. So, Steve, um, obviously the the goal here is to share a few of our anecdotes, our interesting stories about MicroMaster and where where this has touched us um, throughout our careers at Siemens and perhaps before. But if we if we um, if we may first, can we just listen to uh, tell the uh, listeners a little bit more about yourself and uh, how you've arrived at your role with Siemens? Yes, Dave. Um... I left school in 1989. Um, I I joined British Aerospace, as it was called at the time. It's now Airbus UK. I was a a maintenance electrician there uh, for four years, um, serving me time. And then um, in total, I served uh, 22 and a half years at Airbus. Um, I, I was a controls engineer. Um, I had a lot of experience on uh, machine tools and process plants, etc. Um, across the site, it's quite a large site. And um, back in 2012, um, I decided to join Siemens. So, um, not quite 10 years yet, but get, getting on for 10 years now. Uh, and what, what's your role involved, Steve? Typically, what, what, does a, what does a normal day look like for you? Well, o- over the over the ten years, um, basically, I started as a service engineer um, on on drive systems in the uh, PM team. Um, I did three years um, on that service role. Um, I then did almost two years on machine tool service. Um, but amongst that that first five years, I did get involved with um, retrofit projects along the way. Um, so I was assigned to projects, and then I go back into a service role. Um, five, five years ago, um, I joined Retrofits um, as a product specialist, which um, where I now focus on, on basically um, any motion control projects or retrofits that, that um, customers want us to do for them. Um, it's, it's not just motion we do. We do... Um, all sorts of automation products, PLC upgrades, um, software rewrites, HMIs, um, so, so all aspects of the retrofit, really. Um, but predominantly, we're a motion control retrofit team. <clears throat> Brilliant. That sounds really interesting. Um, just turning to retrofits, it's my under my view that uh, there's always an element of organised chaos Um uh, with a retrofit, things that you haven't perhaps seen. So, would, A, would you share that opinion, Steve? Uh, and, and B, how would you manage the the curveballs that get thrown at you from time to time? Yeah, I, I mean, it's uh, ev- some jobs are more chaotic than others. The You, you know, each job has its own complexity. Um, you, you know, I, I think... Um, <clears throat> There's always something that's sort of waiting to catch you out. So, what I'm, I'm a big believer in the organize, organizational side and the planning side. So, I I try to overdo that a little bit, really. So, I'm prepared. It's uh, it's it's all about the preparation side for me. Um, but it's it, it's quite often like a game of snooker, Dave. Um, you, you've got to think of your next two or three shots, really, um, or, or the next two or three tasks in the project. And, and, and just constantly um, second uh, question yourself on, 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 on certain aspects of the job. What can go wrong? What if this happens? Um, what am I going to do? Um, so, so, yeah, it's, it's, it can be very chaotic. Um, when it's when it's going smoothly, that's that's when I'm a little worried because I'm just wondering what's around the corner. <laughs> You're almost waiting to get put behind the black and uh, uh, trying to trying not to uh, give a foul away. 
that's it, yeah. But I think mm-hmm. if if you're organised and you know quite well and and your planning's good um, and you involve the right people um, and and um, you know and invite their specialisms to the to, to the project, then I think you can you know you've done as much as you can to prevent anything going wrong, and and then it, you know your experience kicks in. Um, if something does um, go amiss and, 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 you know, you deal with it as and when it happens. Well, absolutely. Um, experience, but every day is a school day and, and we learn with each project that we undertake. So just uh, obviously this is about MicroMaster, Steve. Um, and can you share with me or the listeners what your first experience of MicroMaster was? When did this, when did you first cross, cross paths or uh, swords or even snooker cues with, with MicroMaster? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, originally I, I got introduced to MicroMasters back when I was working for Airbus. I was a controls engineer, um, and we had many different drive systems from different manufacturers. But um, um, MicroMasters, we had, we had quite a lot on on our single aisle paint shop. And um, there was there was a big refurb that I was involved with. I, I didn't commission any any of the drives, but the the integrator at the time. Um, um, it, it, it chosen the MicroMasters to run the fan extraction fan supply fans to the paint shop. Um, but yeah, we yeah we had um, quite a few MicroMasters. Um, I've seen them in crane systems, um, um, maybe some conveyor systems there. Um, so I'd say my first experience day was was at Airbus. Before okay. I'd even so got quite to a broad these. range of applications then with, uh, w- with with the portfolio, uh, uh, and it was was the was the experience better than hoped for? Did it have a, a reputation that preceded it, um, or uh, how, what was your, your your overall impression of the product when you first touched it? Um, it, I think it was quite good, Dave. To be honest, um, I'd I'd never really well, at my time at Airbus, I didn't really. Um, have any um, preconceptions about the drive? Had not really heard anything good or bad. Really, um, I was just expecting, you know, to be a quality product from Siemens because you know the Siemens kit was generally quite reliable. Um, so, so I didn't have any preconceptions. Um, I, I did have a few. What <laughs> once I joined Siemens, um, I, I was told that the MicroMaster wasn't such a good drive. Um, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't really see it. If I'm honest with you, you, you know, you, some products can get these reputations, and it's down to one's experience. Um, I, I didn't tend to come across any that, that were particularly bad. Um, they're, they're a general purpose drive, and I think so long as they're selected correctly, um, commissioned correctly, then you know, as with most drives, um, they'll be fine. Mm-hmm. So now, quoting a, f- a famous uh, lyric, uh, now the end is near for MicroMaster and it faces its final curtain. Uh, what would you see as perhaps the main reason that customers are embracing change? And uh, if you if you have thought about um, the latest Dynamics product, what what do you think are the compelling arguments for customers to to uh, be excited by this new portfolio and, uh, and uh, embrace change? Yeah, I mean, I've been involved in, I'd say, a, a, quite a few um, retrofits over the last five years. People are swapping out MicroMasters now. Um, I think the Synamics range, the S and the G, um, uh, does offer better diagnostics, um, certainly with um, the, the the fault um, fault pages, diagnostic pages that come up and give you um, causes and remedies. Um, I think are particularly good. Um, the trace functions are really good, also. Um, I, you know, specifically with with more detailed applications, we use the trace functions um, whilst commissioning and to diagnose faults, etc. Um, really looking at what the system's doing, um, the real time trace functions. So I, I'd say. It was along them lines, the diagnostics facilities, I think, are better than the older system. That sounds really good. Um, as you men- mentioned before, it, it had um, uh, it, it's a product that I think most people would say they grew to love. 
Um, so if we took those learning experiences from MicroMaster and we, we applied that to te technologies of today, then what would you suggest was um, the silver bullet that our um, R&D engineers, our development engineers need to consider for, uh, for, for the next generation of Synamics? I think if if we could look at a way of simulating, um, you know, the, the the motor or the mechanics better, I think that would be, um, you know, a big improvement. Um, often, there's only so much we can do on a rig at home or with the with the hardware that we buy for a specific project. You know, the the drive behaves. A lot differently on some some applications more than others present us with more mechanical issues um, that we can only really see when we're on site. And and like I said to you before, I'm I'm all about the sort of um, the planning side of a project, the pre pre engineering, getting prepared um, before we actually get to site. So if we could find a way of simulating the mechanics with the drives, I know there are some. Siemens um, applications that do it, but, but but more on a down at a drive level and a, a you know a, a motor level really, um, I'd I'd say that would be a a real improvement we could look look for. Well, that's really nice nice feedback, that Steve, and, and you're absolutely right. The the digital enterprise story, the 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 pre engineering is is definitely somewhere that we're uh, spending a lot of focus and uh, a lot of investment. So, yeah, it's nice to see that um, once we uh, once we make a, some further steps in that in that journey, then it'll really help you um, with your day to day job. So. Um, We've spoken about retrofits in general. Do you have any interesting or amusing or uh, particularly anecdotes, or any any famous applications that you've looked at, Steve? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm working one at the moment, Dave. Um, it's, it's for a company called Gulf Aviation, and um, it's uh, based on the Rolls-Royce um, site in, in Derby. Uh, it's the engine test facility. It, it was... Um, installed and um, upgraded in the past by Siemens, um, but we've we've been in well we've we've got involved with it because of um, some quite long lengths of Profibus network and with the cabling now quite old it's it's gone from being discolored to, to cracking and it's 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 in quite bad uh, repair really um, so. Um, so yeah, we've, we're currently looking at um, swapping out some MicroMasters on that job, um, as, as well as um, upgrading to a fiber network. Um, we're, we're swapping out um, some older PLC uh, uh, CPUs into a combined uh, 1500 safety CPU. Um, there's Profibus PA on there, um, so it's, it's quite a, quite a mix of technologies really. Um, so, so yeah, we we were contacted because of the, originally because of the drives and the projects grew, and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting application. You they're, they're testing an engine and um, before it's shipped um, to to go on to the respective aircraft it's testing for. Um, they're they're about twenty thirty million pounds per, per unit. Um, they can have up to six of these units on test at any one time. Um, and, and basically, this fuel system that's supplying the fuel for the t engine test, it, it's got to be quite reliable. And, uh, it, you know, the specific parts of the test, the engine test, it, for example, when it's at, at its hottest, um, it, you know, you need, it, it, you can't have this system fail. So, yeah, it's so um, there's no pressure one. there, then, Steve, by the sounds no of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I'd heard somewhere perhaps that also um, you were involved in a project uh, for the Ministry of Def Defence in uh, in Whitehall. Yeah, we've um, we've done three phases now. Um, I wasn't involved with the first phase, um, but last year was phase two. That early this year, phase three, and we've replaced all the uh, the MicroMasters that were there running their uh, ventilation systems at. Uh, uh, Whitehall in London. It was a, a very interesting location. Um, the, the, the application was fairly straightforward. There was quite a few um, 
free functions to set up um, for, for the drive to um, to work as expected with the uh, the building management system. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, we've replaced all the MicroMasters there to um, a G120 product. Wow! So you were up on the roof overlooking the uh, with with the ventilation. You were up on the roof and overlooking the city of London. Yeah, overlooking the city of London un- underneath the flagpoles, um, <laughs> ducking under up and over pipe work to to get to all these various um, plant rooms um, across the different spines of the building. Um, but uh, well, one one interesting um, uh, th- piece that we we got, I, I got to visit Henry VIII's wine cellar, oh. which um, <laughs> th- th- none of the uh, none of the public can get to view. It's only if you're um, in Whitehall um, or, or you're employed by Whitehall, you can go into the basement and. And, and see the wine cellar. So, so you, you know, every now and again you get to do a job and uh, something like that comes along and surprises you that you weren't expecting to see. And, and what was Henry a fan of, red or white? <laughs> well, unfortunately, there's there's no wine left in the cellar anymore. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd imagine he was red. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I always look at the um, – when you see the Prime Minister walking in, a, in and out of town, down the street, and you see this two-up, two-down townhouse, you, you just don't appreciate the, the size of the building that, that goes beyond, beyond it. So 100 rooms there approximately. Uh, and it kind of – you kind of understand understand why Boris can spend hundreds of thousands on re- renovating his apartment when you when you see the sheer scale of it. So um, going, it, it, ah, you did, they didn't ask you to um, take a zip wire down like Boris did at the Olympics then, Steve, I, I'd take it. No, no, not at all, no. But, but we, we, in the plant rooms, you did look over down in street to see the rooftops, and like you say, it is it's quite an, a, a maze of... Uh, buildings really at the back you only just see the facade don't you on the tv of uh, number 10 but uh, like you say at the back it's uh, extensive mm-hmm. so we've um, looked at the the uh, the retrofits we've got the, the golf aviation one we've got um, the opportunity with uh, the, the phased opportunity with downing street uh, or, or whitehall more specifically um What's been you uh, going back to um, some of the applications, conveyors, for example? What, what what's a learning point that perhaps we don't consider when we first was first start out at these projects? So let's use a conveyor example, for example. Yeah, I mean, I've I've done quite a few conveyors now, and and the scene is by, by many to be general purpose and you know fairly straightforward and and most of the time they are but you, you do occasionally come across uh, some and, and this this is where the preparation and planning side comes in that you can't prepare for so so we're in particular conveyor systems um specifically incline conveyors um you know quite often you you commission and there's no load um so you know when you hand it back into production um we did for example we did one at global renewables where we replaced 20 uh, micromasters last year we put g120s in there and and there's a maze of a network of um, conveyor systems inclined etc um it comes to monday morning um and and you know them net um them conveyors are full of you know all, all the sort of recycling that people have sent to, to that particular plant so that they, they can be quite overloaded um you know we've we've seen a few um at quarries that we've done where again you'll commission and you can commission with with uh, full of uh, sand or aggregate um and, and you think you've got it set up right and then yeah, if if after leaving site, all of a sudden there's a sudden downpour, the weight can increase significantly. So yeah, things like that can catch you out. The loading um, on conveyor systems. Some some customers want you to position the conveyors, and they're not really designed for you know, the system's not designed to position. So so yeah, you, they do present um, a couple of challenges sometimes. 
I, I must say, though, Steve, I'm quite surprised that we uh, we get caught out by the wet weather in the UK. But um, <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, I, I, again, I, I'm guessing it's one of those snookers that we uh, we get we get cut, laid for us and we have to plot our way out. So uh, just just as a close, Steve, thank you very, very much for really uh, interesting insights um, about your role, about the portfolio and also about the, 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 the retrofits itself. So as is tradition with these podcasts, we, we kind of pick a, either a song or an event uh, that, that reminds us uh, of the MicroMaster product. So may I turn to you, please, uh, and ask you, if you had to, to think of an, a song or an event, what, what would be what would resonate with you and make you think of MicroMaster? Well, after we've just been talking about the uh, conveyor systems, um, and, and sometimes they go and sometimes they don't, it'd have to be the clash, Dave. Should I stay or should I go? <laughs> what a brilliant <laughs> end. What a brilliant end. Thank you very much, Steve. Really interesting and insightful interview. Thank you once again, and I look forward to... Uh, to, to all the, the listeners enjoying this, and, and, and thank you from thank you for, on behalf of everybody from uh, the customer services and people who are associated with MicroMaster. Thanks a lot, Dave. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.